Hi, and welcome to In the Studio. My name is Jeff Shaw, and we have a uh, special guest, two guests today, actually. Uh, to my right is Mr. Gary Chu. He's a longtime broadcaster, and we're going to be talking to him a little bit about some of his experience. Uh, you can see him there on the camera. And to Gary's right is actually Ruth Chambers. She's a longtime community broadcaster who's been uh, broadcasting here at Davis Media Access for a long time. She'll be uh, adding some uh, color commentary and helping me with some of the questions with Gary uh, since we have such a short time to talk to him today. Gary, so, oh yeah, here we are. Uh, um, you started out in broadcasting, I looked it up on the internet, in 1956. Is that true or not? Well, it's true you, or false? You mean it's actually online? It's online somewhere, and uh, oh. there's a little blurb about you. Uh, 1956, that was some time Didn't ago. Did it say where? It, uh, well, it said Blackwell, Oklahoma. That's exactly right. That's where I, that's where I graduated from high school. And uh, did you start broadcasting in high school? No, actually, I, gra <clears throat> excuse me, I gra started graduating, um, I graduated in 55, and I started going to a junior college just south of Blackwell, and I was a music student, and they were having, uh, they had a campus radio station there, just a carrier current station. Okay. And they, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> they said the small station that was in Blackwell was going to need to hire a couple of announcers, and we should go up and do an audition at the campus station at the little college okay. place around. So were you a singer at the time? What kind yeah, of I was music? A, yeah, I was a singer primarily, okay. but I was taking music curriculum. You know. Okay. But did you think that helped with, uh, you know, learning how to be a broadcaster and have oh. presence on the microphone? Oh, yeah, and yeah, and being a speaking voice and how to articulate your words and stuff like that. Sure. And that was, a, not a, that was not a paid gig. Oh, I yes, mean. it was. Uh, oh. the, my first radio job was a paid gig, and I got a dollar an hour. Wow. That much. That, that much, yeah. Uh, and then you moved to Tulsa. This is where you got to your big break. And <laughs> Actually, so I, went, speak. I went to Wichita first. Okay. And then I, I met a guy in Wichita who had been at, uh, uh, worked at a station in Jefferson City, Missouri, and he went to Tulsa, and then I left Wichita, and he got me a job in Tulsa. Okay, and, and that was at a radio station, or yeah, it was an AM station in Wichita in about 1959. And what were you doing it there? I was a rock and roll disc jockey, and uh, was going to the University of Tulsa. And this was in the in 59, so rock and roll was a uh, was a was a new new thing. Yeah, and I was I was I was all set up for the Beatles too to come along. What was in 63 or four? The uh -huh. Beatles came along. That's right. On. That's right. So That's you were at the station broadcasting rock and roll, and mm -hmm. when the British and when the Beatles uh, yep. first. Uh, yep. And that, did that uh, help sales or, uh, or what? Yeah, it did, <laughs> matter of fact. Uh, actually, we're all kind of flabbergasted about the Beatles. I had never been a real strong fan of rock and roll music. I'd always liked jazz better growing up. Mm -hmm. And then when the Beatles came by, and well, the Beatle records came by. That's right. I started right. listening. We all, all of us said, these guys are really pretty good, you know? Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, so that's so that changed. That changed. That was a, a moment you can remember. It flip flopped. Sure. It, that's it, right. It flip flopped me. So I mean, I didn't flip me away from the other kind of music, but it just Open. enlarged my sure. perspective. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and that was just because you thought they were such good players, or the music was so uh, so original. So original, and just because it was different, and sure. I liked what the words, were, the, what the, the music was saying. So th so then you moved on to television. <laughs> And uh, if I ha going the transition from radio to television, uh, was that just because the technology was changing? Was that because someone said you ought to be in television? Or I had a there was a guy. I was I was an, always an on the air disc jockey when I worked in radio, and most of the people that I ran around with in the commercial broadcasting were uh, newsmen, and mm. I always have uh, been close with people that work in news. And he worked. He was a newsman, and he. Uh, he left the station and went to the local CBS affiliate in Tulsa. And after he was there for a while, he called me up and told me that the weatherman there was going to go back. He was going to Wichita to be an uh, anchor man. And he said, you know, I th he says, I think you ought to try for that job because you can make more money and you, you, know, you can't play rock and roll records when right. you're 50 years so old. So you became a weatherman. Uh, yep, exactly. And uh, this is a shot of you here uh, doing the weather. Um, there now, he is. Okay, this is, this is this is a. There's no green screen. There's someone behind the screen. Sounds seems like uh, 
you know, there were hijinks back Looks in like the day. Looks like Kilroy was here yeah. in the That's background. That's exactly right. And <laughs> I, I need to tell you a story about the guy behind the board. You can obviously tell me to tell where I am. I look like yes. I'm about 15 years old there. Uh, his name is Lee Woodward. Uh -huh. And he's still alive, so far as I know, and he lives, he's retired in Tulsa. He's a great golfer. He was, he was the number one weatherman, and he was really good. Yeah. And his brother, who is deceased now, was a movie actor named Morgan Woodward. And Morgan Woodward was the guy with, who was the sheriff who killed Paul Newman in Cool Hand Luke. Oh, son that of a guy. gun. You know, he had the sunglasses on. Yeah. That's, that's, that's Lee's brother. Wow. <laughs> Uh, and then I want to move on now to, uh, you, after you did the weather, you went and you pitched, it, I don't know if this is at the same station or another station, where you uh, pitched, I want to do movie reviews. And this was sort of a, people weren't doing movie reviews on television at the oh, time. Oh, right. That's exactly, that was, that was at Channel 6. And, and what, the reason that came about in the opening came sort of was because they expanded to a... Uh, a full hour of news, uh -huh. evening news. And Remember mm -hmm. that expansion they, came? They brought up this picture yeah. here. I just want to show. Oh. Uh, this is. It became so popular that uh, they advertised you as a person, that local per television personality at uh, in Tulsa, right? As well, a, and he's known for his good posture. And, and yeah, you, uh -huh. this is a very. This is you reviewing a movie. It's no, very, it's me sitting in my front room by a bay window, looking out the window at a, some fall leaves. The but, guy who took the picture. Uh, I, his name is Dino Economist. He worked. He was a photographer at Channel Six. Now, uh, Great guy. But this is—they're advertising. People tune in and check out this uh, relaxed dude. Give you movie reviews. Is that kind <laughs> yeah, of the yeah. idea here? Yeah. What happened was when they it's a expanded, very different time. When they expanded the, the newscast, it—they needed things to fill it out. And sure. I went to the news director and I said, "I'm a new movie freak. I always mm -hmm. have been, even when I was a little boy." And I said, "I can start writing movie reviews." And doing them on the air, I said, he said, he says, see a movie, write a script, and record it. You know, he was very... He gave you that freedom. Yeah, and then I walked in and... And this is... And he, he said, we're going to put, put you on the air. And it was popular. How did you know it was popular? It was a... Well, I can't, I don't, I didn't have any particular numbers <laughs> yeah. in books, sure. but you know, uh, people, there wasn't anybody else doing movie reviews on television in about 19... Mm -hmm. 70? 70 ish. Okay. Yeah, I think one of the first movies I did was uh, Doc with Casey St St <laughs> Stacy Keach, uh -huh. the Western. Yeah, and this is, to put things in context, uh, this is before Siskel and Ebert. This is, yeah, well, yeah. This is yeah, before well, they started, so right. it really was mm -hmm. not a. Uh, and I was a big fan of those guys, yeah. particularly Ebert, because, you know, Ebert. So knowledgeable. Oh, he's, and such a nice guy he was, too. So you stayed out there until uh, what year, and then you moved to Sacramento and started doing uh, Capital Public Radio. Well, right actually, yeah, I had some other places to go, Texas, okay. <laughs> Missouri, and... All broadcasting. And I went to related. Wichita and worked, began at public radio. I actually I started a public radio. I feel it, got the University of Tulsa FM station on the air with NPR affiliation okay. in 1978 or 9. And... Uh, so, and then I went and worked in public TV for a while, and then I moved to Wichita and worked in public radio again. Then I came to Sacramento. Gotcha. And Sacramento, you came here primarily for the broadcasting job, or? Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, I was, I didn't really enjoy being a sort of a department head or an operations director, program yeah, director yeah. type person, and mm -hmm. I, I, I really wanted to do what I started out doing. You know, which is being on the air. Yeah, and uh, it takes a certain personality to be on no, the air, right, to, Ruth? Uh, that's, that's you have to have a gigantic that. ego. That's another part of <laughs> is it. Too. That it? <laughs> and so I took the job. I offered. Uh, uh, what's the word I want to use? I wanted to go to the uh, apply for the job. Sure. At Sacramento, and I got it, and uh, I started working at KXPR and Capital Public Radio. Yeah. Uh, in January of '89. Mm -hmm. Worked about almost 20 years. And y y being someone who uh, helped start, bring the NPR affiliation to Tulsa and then working for, continuing to work in NPR, you saw NPR change quite a bit, I'm oh, yes. sure. And yeah. how is it, uh, how did it change in your estimation? Well, I always, I remember the first time I ever heard N uh, NPR, it was All Things Considered. I was driving from Tulsa to Wichita to visit my parents and the local station in Wichita 
already had NPR affiliation, but Tulsa didn't, so I had not heard NPR before. And I started listening to this newscast in the afternoon as I was driving into town, mm -hmm. and I thought, golly, it was, they were covering water. It was Watergate was going on then because they were yeah, talking about John big. Sirica. And I thought, that's really an interesting piece they have put together there. And then Susan Stamberg was the host, along with Bob Edwards. The morning edition wasn't even on the air yet. And so I went back, and I finally got the job at KWGS as a manager, and then I started po politicking and lobbying for getting NPR affiliation. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, that uh, that happened officially in early 19, uh, late 1978. And it's, I mean, the, it's clearly grown. <laughs> NPR has grown since. Right, and, and, and it's gone and through it's, phases where Congress votes to, mm -hmm. you know, cut Big Bird or whatever. Yeah, is, I know. Like, I remember <laughs> one of the first things we carried of NPR, and that was a continuing thing, was the Panama Canal Treaty hearings when Jimmy Carter was president, mm -hmm. which was a rather controversial thing because mm -hmm. some people, you know, it's like what's today in politics, you know, there were people who were for it and people who weren't, weren't yeah, for it. Yeah, of course. It. And so now uh, <laughs> you've come to Davis and uh, have joined mm -hmm. us community broadcasters. Uh, <laughs> Ruth, uh, I, sh I didn't mention, but Ruth does the Chamber Street Theater on uh, yes, Thursdays at 11 a.m. <laughs> Before or that, heard of it, just vaguely. <laughs> before that, uh, you produced uh, a television. Yeah, uh, Granny Muffin Reads. For many years. Uh, yes. And, uh, and you've now joined uh, the ranks of the community broadcasters. He's um, going to teach us some tricks, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Professional. Uh, <laughs> Uh, uh, no, no, no tricks. No tricks. <laughs> well, skills. Well, Let's okay. call it skills. Well, I don't know. Maybe so. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe I'm style. just actually what I'm doing is uh, on KDRT is uh, the one hour program I have now is that I'm actually putting together some music that I've wanted to put together for a long time yes. and you're giving me that opportunity and I think it's sounding good to me. Of course, I like the music too. Yeah. But I now. think it's great. Uh, I'd, like, I'd like to invite people to tune in on uh, Wednesdays at 1 p.m. for Gary's show, uh, but I've, I've learned already a bunch of uh, the music. I've, I've, uh, the soundtrack you played off from uh, the movie Diva last week, mm -hmm. uh, that uh, sentimental walk or something Yeah, yeah like I that. remember you are coming into the control yeah. room and asking me what I it knew was. I'd, yeah. I knew I'd heard, there's some of those things you've heard over time, and you know, they're faint in your memory, and you kind of... Well, movie themes, you hear them while you're watching the movie, and then you never... You hear them again. You can hardly hear them. There are just a few places you can hear movie music yeah. and uh, on radio, and now here in, in KDRT now, we can do that. You can play yes. that. No, a little bit, but I also play some classical music and some jazz, which all kind of moves, I melt, try to meld it together. I don't play early classical music. The classical music I play is 20th century primarily. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, it's repeating a theme, too, in the music. So when you played one the other day, you had Via Lobos, mm -hmm. and you, then you had Bach, and, you, and the thing is, they were similar. That's, that's part of it. I mean, I'm... Uh, actually, I used to do that about 10 minutes of this kind of programming when I worked at the Capitol Public Radio. When I worked the late classical shift in the evening, and there was a jazz shift that was coming on after me, and so I would be the guy who would make the transition between my classical ah. shift to the jazz that was starting. And then that would be a natural time. Yeah, and then I started accumulating this information yes. about music, and I was like, golly, there's some really great stuff wow. that falls right into that niche. That's right. And it just happens that it's... People call it third stream music as to Gunther Schuller developing. And it's not really third stream music hmm. while I'm playing, but it's, it's a great word to use because everybody's streaming these days. Yes. Well, uh, well, it's just like KDRT does. Exactly. We're on the web at kdrt.org. Uh, you can mm -hmm. tune in and listen to Ruth's show, uh, Chamber, Chamber Street, Street Theater, Theater, Thursdays at 11 a.m. or online at kdrt.org. Gary's show. Uh, third streaming on uh, Wednesdays at 1 p.m. and online at kdrt.org. I'm glad that uh, we have the space here for you know to you to spread your wings uh, <laughs> from your bringing all your broadcast uh, experience here well, to uh, a, share very, with other people. So, I'm very uh, flattered for you to say that. Yeah, well, I encourage everyone to check out both of these shows. And thanks, Gary. Thanks, Ruth, also for co-hosting tonight. Thank you. Bringing, uh, Thank bringing, you. Talking to Gary. It's a pleasure. And uh, I encourage everyone to check it out online. Here in Davis at 95.7 FM. My name is Jeff, and uh, thanks for tuning in to In the Studio, and thanks again for coming in, you guys. My pleasure.